SpaceX's biggest goal right now is definitely setting Starship in operation. So we think the SpaceX team is now focusing everything for the only first orbital flight. Well, actually, no. We weren't really focusing on the orbital ship. We were focusing on the production systems that will build the ship. We know how to get to orbit. That is what SpaceX President Gwen Shotwell just confirmed. Why can't we build a rocket every day? That's what we're focusing on with Starship, is attacking every part of the production process to be able to build lots of these machines. And they're exactly hitting this. This year, they're targeting five boosters, eight star and eight starships in production for 2023. Let's find out everything about SpaceX's insane manufacturing plans with Starship in today's episode of Alpha Tech. But before we start, if you're new, don't forget, hit that subscribe button and click that bell icon. That way you're updated on our latest content. Let's get started. SpaceX's Boca Chica, Texas hardware endeavors began in an empty field in late 2018, kicking off Starhopper testing in 2019. In late 2019 and early 2020, the company began building the bones of the factory that exists today, relying heavily on several giant tents, sprung structures similar to those used by Tesla. SpaceX has already begun the process of replacing those tents with larger permanent buildings, but two of the original tents continue to host crucial parts of the Starship manufacturing process. Yeah, last year they built four Starship Super Heavy boosters, five Starships, our 200 Raptor 2 engine. In 2022, SpaceX finished Booster 7 and built Booster 8, Booster 9, and most of Booster 10. Booster 8 was almost immediately relegated to the retirement yard. Booster 9, featuring some significant design changes, completed a limited amount of proof testing and returned to the factory in early January, likely for Raptor engine installation. SpaceX began stacking B-10 in late October of 2022, and the vehicle is now fully stacked. In the same period, SpaceX finished an immediately retired Starship S-22, finished and began testing Ship 24, finished and began testing Ship 25, and finished stacking Ship 26. Booster 9's upgrades partially insulate it from the most disappointing possible scenario, retirement before flight. Even if Booster 7 fails during pre-launch testing or its launch attempt revealing major design flaws, it's possible Booster 9's changes have already addressed those weaknesses. That would allow it to continue the flight test campaign. Ship 25's fate is even more dependent on the fate of Ship 24, Ship 27 and 28 are in production. Consider that it's now the end of Q1 of 2023, so SpaceX is fully capable of reaching its required target of five boosters, eight starships. But how will this actually benefit SpaceX? And really, you do need a production system to rapidly iterate, like we were talking about earlier, on the design of the vehicle as we learn more about it from these large tests. Yeah, absolutely. Um, pulling on my industrial engineering background, system fill is something that is critical to that goal. Um, being able to produce and launch multiple starships means that we have to have a system full of those production vehicles and we iterate on each one. So even the next Starship that will fly in whatever the next test is will be different than the one that you see there on your screen now. Yes, spacecraft development is a risky business and SpaceX is no stranger to explosions, ruptures, and failed landings. So far, it can be said that no company has tested rockets as many times as SpaceX. They've tried countless times, they failed a lot, but also succeeded the most. SpaceX's Starship prototype spacecraft is the example of that. In just four months, from December 2020 to March 21, SpaceX tested four Starship prototypes, SN8, SN9, SN10, and SN11, respectively. But the result? Four tries, four failures. Despite suffering a series of consecutive failures, the company remains undeterred, and they continue to plan for the next test. And in the end, fortune will smile on them. On May 5, 2021, SpaceX made a Starship triumph when its Starship SN15 prototype launched and landed safely and did not explode afterward. It can be seen that SpaceX's path to success was built on countless failures similar to their philosophy. Failure is a compulsory step. 
A high production rate solves many ills. If you have a high production rate, you have a high iteration rate. For pretty much any technology whatsoever, the progress is a function of how many iterations do you have, and how much progress do you make between each iteration, Musk told reporters in 2020. If you have a high production rate, then you have many iterations. You can make progress from one to the next. The willingness to fail, something that NASA and others have lacked for a very long time, is what enables SpaceX to move so fast, to rapidly iterate and improve. If at first you don't succeed, try again. Luckily, Elon Musk has had a lot of experience with similar projects. He lived through production hell at Tesla in 2017 and 18, building up factories, changing processes, having many sleepless nights, and going through all manner of mental agony. Luckily, the rewards are well worth the effort. Now Tesla's Giga Shanghai has reached massive production speeds of up to 2,000 vehicles in a single day. That's extremely impressive, isn't it? Musk then applied the well-worth lessons learned from Tesla's assembly line to SpaceX. That helps their workers not burn out. They'll work three 12-hour days and then have a four-day weekend. Then they'll work four 12-hour shifts with a three-day weekend. Thus, with four shifts, the Boca Chica site can operate at full capacity 24 hours a day, seven days a week. SpaceX is throwing in hot meals every three to four hours for free. For now, the company is simultaneously building Starship and Super Heavy prototypes and conducting ground tests at the launch site. They have already performed multiple test flights since 2019 and are preparing to conduct the first orbital test flight with a fully stacked Super Heavy Starship. The stacking of a Starship from start to finish right now takes about three months. That's pretty impressive, huh? Having said that, no space company can beat SpaceX in rocket manufacturing speed. Let's turn your eyes to Blue Origin, a one-time rival of SpaceX. Blue Origin began developing systems for orbital human spacecraft prior to 2012. And as of September 2018, Blue Origin had invested over $1 billion in their Florida manufacturing facility and launch site, and they intend to spend much more going forward. Pitifully so far, Blue Origin's only tested the first New Glenn fairing prototype. Remember, the fairing is perhaps the simplest large assembly of any orbital launch vehicle, and Blue Origin has yet to reveal any evidence of work on an integrated booster or upper stage test hardware. Its launch will be no earlier than Q4 2023. Another similar case is SLS. Well, there's nothing to say about their slow history, but even after Artemis One's success, It'll take NASA more than two years to get astronauts to the moon. While NASA engineers and contractors have been busy constructing various elements of the SLS that would launch Artemis II, key components from the mission's Orion capsule are being reused from Artemis I and must first undergo a series of post-flight validation tests before being installed on the new spacecraft. And that's going to take a long time. According to a November 2022 report from the NASA Office of Inspector General, the OIG, NASA's Exploration Systems Development Mission Directorate considers the non-core avionics reuse to be the primary critical path for the Artemis II mission, with total preparation work between missions to take about 27 months. Critical path, the report explains, is the sequence of tasks that determine the minimum duration of time needed to complete a project. In short, Artemis II can only launch as soon as the most time-consuming task on the engineer's checklist is complete. That task will likely be the processing and reinstallation of Artemis I hardware. In short, the arrival of SpaceX's flagship rocket beat all generations of the rocket industry. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section below. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.